And so with the sitting room, uh, as you may or may not know, it's, it's a series that I do every now and then when it feels right that, that takes people that we know, people that we do not know, um, takes those people and puts them into a space where they're able to just kind of be honest. They're able to talk. Um, and the, the purpose behind that is obviously around the idea that in a world that's as fast paced as it is, even when it comes to the people we sometimes even say we love, there's a disconnect in terms of people simply asking, hey, how are you doing? Um, and like, hey, what's been going on? So that's what I look to do with the sitting room series. The first one, we treated these conversations and put them in a format that was like a radio show. And the second one that we're doing now is taking the individuals that we're working with, you included, and, and treating them like Vogue interviews, like L um, interviews. So we've done the photo shoots, obviously, just now. And they'll be rolled out, not certain if it'll be all digital, like in a blog format, or if I do some paper copies. Knowing me, I'll probably do some paper, paper copies. copies. So, so that'll come out later on as like collectors and special editions and all of that kind of stuff. But I do plan to start rolling these out, probably, honestly, with yours first. Um, hopefully by the end of this month, as, as the new year kind of comes into play. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the background, and that leads to the first basic question of how have you been? Mm. How have I been? I've been um, surviving, I guess you could say. Mm. Surviving. I'm making it. Ah, that says a little bit more too. <laughs> surviving and, and making it. And it sounds as if you're tired from that. Um, yeah, I am. I, uh, the year in its entirety really took a lot out of me. Mm -hmm. And and when I made the transition to come home, which I know we'll get into later on, yeah, um, it wasn't what I expected and. I was thrown a lot of curveballs, like things that, some things I was prepared for, mm -hmm. and the things that I weren't prepared for, they really took a lot out of me. Mm -hmm. And from that, from those things, um, I'm still healing from. Yeah. And so, um, but me just being me, I'm not like, I know people look at me. Uh huh. Because if you ask like a guy, yeah. what they think when they first saw me, that I was mean and stuck up. Of course. Yeah. Which is fine. Uh -huh. I'll take that. <laughs> But really what I am, I'm I'm very goofy. Like if you're around me, I'm probably gonna make you laugh a few times. Absolutely. Um and so that's the way I try to live. I try to live life more on the positive than the negative. Mm -hmm. But as of lately, the negative has been really heavy. Uh -huh. And so it's really been a fight for me to remain positive and continue to be the person that I am. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say I'm tired. Yeah. Because I'm tired from what has happened and it's also tiring trying to rise above it and heal from it and be better than mm -hmm. your circumstances and the things that happen to you. Yeah. So it's been a lot. I won't, I won't lie. It's been a lot. So. Uh -huh. And I mean, I, I, I hear you and I think you, you called out something pretty specific that I'm interested in because it's usually a question that I would save until the end of the conversation. Um, but you, you spoke to the idea that everything that's, that you're dealing with is not defining you, but it is becoming a lot of part of who mm -hmm. you are. So my question becomes today, and we'll, we'll look at where it was in the past and all that kind of stuff, but today, who do you see yourself as? Today, as of today, as of lately, as I, I on Twitter a couple weeks ago, I said, you know, going into 2019, I, I really wanted to be a good year. You know, I haven't had like bad years, but mm -hmm. I haven't won. Mm -hmm. I haven't felt like I've got little wins here and there, but I haven't felt like, dang, that was my year. And so, right now, me as a person, I would probably say that I'm very broken. Hmm. And, I, and I'm and i not afraid to, and it, what I've learned is, the person that I am, and I think that's why people kind of rock with me, mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be real. I'm never going to fake mm -hmm. for anybody because... Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can say to me that's going to make me feel bad about myself. Because I live in every bit of my life. <laughs> yeah, you've you know what said I'm saying? Uh -huh. So, and then it's also, I was listening to this podcast, um, The Read, and 
somebody had written in like how do I discuss with my friends on mental health issues and one of the hosts of the podcast he said you know there's nothing anybody else can say to you that's going to make you feel worse than you already have mm -hmm. so that's why I'm able to say like I'm broken I'm messed <laughs> up yeah you know what I'm saying I try my butt that's not that's not the story yeah but like as your question said who am I right now I am pretty broken and I'm trying my best to be better but I would have I will always face the facts like it is what it is like I'm a mess but I keep going uh -huh. so in short who am I right now child a mess broken I don't know <laughs> I don't know you know it's, uh -huh. it's up in the air I don't know yeah so then let's talk about who you were because mm -hmm. um, you obviously graduated from school and, and I think the professional opportunities just from what I remember and obviously our relationship has been far beyond just today so from what I remember, you had opportunities where you were able to leave the state and go out and to learn things and all that kind of stuff. What what type of learnings do you think you, you most benefited from and, and maybe even some that maybe hurt the most? As far as what? As far as me leaving? Leaving home. Um, and before, when I graduated, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And well, now I have a better picture of what it is that I want to do. Now, how I'm going to get there, I don't know. Uh -huh. But I see the vision. I know where I have more of a purpose. I have an idea of what I'm good at and what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. But then I didn't really know what I was going to do. And, and when I prayed, I would pray very specifically, but also generally. You know, I would pray, I would like to have a job, I would like to move away, um, I would like to be doing okay for myself. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. So when the opportunity came, because I prayed, I never wanted to pray a prayer that limited me. Um, uh, I didn't want to say, God, I want to move to, I, I've always wanted to live in Texas, but I never said, God, take me to Texas. Uh, in hindsight, maybe I should have, <laughs> but I never wanted to limit myself. So I never said, God, move me. All my friends were in D.C. So I was like, I never said, God, move me to D.C. Mm -hmm. I just say, God, I want to leave North Carolina. Okay. And of all places, he took me to Kansas City, Missouri. The Kansas middle of nowhere, Missouri. The middle of nowhere. And I'm like, all right, you know, this is what I wanted. I'm thinking in my head, this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to graduate, get a job, mm -hmm. become an adult, do what you do. So that's what I did. I took the job. I moved away. I was so I was scared. I was so full of fear, and I did not say anything because I didn't want my mom to be scared. She was already hesitant about it, but I didn't want her to be scared. But about, let me see, my uncle passed, he was already sick, he, my uncle passed about, let me think, his funeral, then it was homecoming, then I left. He passed two weeks before I moved. Mm -hmm. And um, at his funeral, obviously I was already sad because that, like, my family was pretty close-knit. Yeah. So it was already sad, but then it was also like all of the feeling that I held, mm -hmm. it like poured out of like, I was crying uncontrollably at my uncle's funeral. And it wasn't just because of his passing, it was because like I was scared out of my mind, I had no idea what was about to happen, I had no idea what I was going to do. But I mean, I, I didn't tell anybody that's why I'm crying, I'm at a funeral, so they think I'm just crying because, yeah. and then like I had my little cousin next to me, who was like my little brother, and he's like, he was 16, and my uncle was kind of like his dad. Mm -hmm. So he's crying. So it looks like I'm crying because he's crying. And okay. We're just, we just can't control ourselves. But it was that too. Yeah. Along course. with my own. I get it. Fears that I held in and didn't tell yeah. anybody, which I shouldn't have done. But I didn't want to scare my mom uh -huh. any further. I didn't want her to know that I was nervous. I just always tried to hold it together for my mom. So fast forward, I move. I'm there. Um, I had never really paid a lot of bills. <laughs> you know, I my mom paid for my phone. My car, my stepdad paid for my car. Um, my, they were more so the mindset of school is my job. Do what you yeah. want to, if I wanted, if I wanted to shop and have money to go out, that was on me. I like it. And so I did. I worked a little bit, but I mean, I was living on campus. Didn't really have to pay a lot. Of, even when I moved off campus, my stepdad paid my rent. Uh, so you were good. I was not really an adult. <laughs> and so it wasn't until I learned, um, I learned how to be an adult. Like, my first few weeks of working, I was like, Mommy, I don't know how you did it coming home after work and then having to also have a child that you have to kind of mm -hmm. entertain and help with homework. I could not have done it. So, when I moved, I definitely learned how to be an adult. Yeah. Um, I learned how to run a household. Okay. Because my bills had to be paid. Uh -huh. You know, I had to go to work, um, even though I did not want to. Um, 
You know, I learned how to be, I had learned how to be by my, and that's why I wanted to move because I knew being so close to my mom and my family, I was not going to grow. Yeah. You know, I would not be as responsible. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to learn to keep my house together and just little minor things, you know. I see. But I also learned how to get it for myself, I guess you could say, like, or that's learn it. how to be with myself because I was, I didn't know anybody there. When I moved, yeah. I didn't know anybody. It was you. It yeah. was me. And I wanted to, that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted to start fresh. Will I do that again? I don't know. <laughs> but now that I've done it, I can do it. You know? Uh -huh. So, the biggest lesson that I learned was how to be an adult. Yeah. How to be grown. Uh-huh. You know? Because that's not what college teaches you. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's, uh, college is like a bubble. It's a safety. Absolutely. It's a safety net, you know? It is. They're the calf. You know, you don't think about, when I get off work, what am I going to eat? I have to cook, you know, what about lunch? Mm. You know, you know, it's always already there for you. And then all your bill money start going to that. Exactly. So it's like, all right, you want to eat out every day. Yeah. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. Not to mention for your wallet, but your, for your body's sake. <laughs> when I moved, I got up to, what, how much did I weigh? I got up to 155. You're a dick there. Mind you, I'm 5'3". I'm not that tall. <laughs> and I don't have, like, I'm not a 5'3 with, like, a long torso, long, like, no. Like, I'm, like... A five three. It's just a real five three. Like a real five three, <laughs> like for real. And so, yeah, I just learned how to be an adult. Mm -hmm. It was a tough lesson the, the whole time. I would just say the overarching was I learned how to be an adult. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, because it, it's it's obvious the idea that if you you leave college at some point, you gotta grow up and you, mm -hmm. you gotta put yourself for you to be able to really kind of determine, you know. All right, so I, I learned a little bit growing up. What do I want to do with it, mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff, and then following it through. I find it interesting that that in that transition and moving away and all of that kind of stuff, and you being alone and, and everything you had to learn. You didn't mention anything about two things: um, friends and how the transition and, and and having friends and maintaining friends even after college was. And then you didn't mention anything about a guy, a special someone, or anything. Mm -hmm. um, when it came to your associations, mm -hmm. let's call it that, mm -hmm. coming out of school, what were some of the, the challenges or maybe not so much challenges, advantages you had because of the circle that you had around you? How did that play a part in your transition? As far as friends, there was we never missed a beat. Mm -hmm. um, I did feel not not left out. I did miss a lot of things because the three people I hang with, it's a four, it's a four of us. Uh-huh. And so th th three of them were in DC, so obviously Every they saw each other yeah. more. Yeah. But we always communicated. I never felt slighted by my friends, mm -hmm. um, and even other friends. Even I say I speak. Of, I think if people like follow me on social media, they probably see me only with Amaya, Keon, and Liana. I do have other friends. We just all those just happen to be like the, close people, the closer one yeah. than other than others. But um, and even none. Of, I never had a relationship where I felt slighted. As far as friends, like we always texted, I mean, social media. Mm -hmm. um, I never felt, I didn't miss them because I didn't see them as, I'm, you go from seeing your friends every single day, <laughs> like, you know, like they're so close to you. Yeah. Like they're, even if you're living, um, in reference to WSSU, if you're living in Gleason and living in Rams or something like, they're right still there. so, it's still right there. Mm -hmm. But when you get older, it's like you got a friend in D.C., you got a friend in Texas, you got a friend in North Carolina, yeah. and, it's, and it's harder. So that's where the work comes in. Uh -huh. And remembering that you're a friend and that, it, again, you have to do work to maintain this relationship. Right. You have to call. You yeah. have to text. Yeah. Before, you might didn't have to because you're going to see them, but now you have to do these things yeah. in order to maintain the relationship. So I never, even a, with that group, we have a group chat, so it's always something going on in the group chat. But then even with my other friends that aren't in a group, there was always some type mm -hmm. of communication in the, um, we, and it's also like, we you also learn that you don't have to talk to your friends every day. A tough learning for a lot of people that still don't get it these days. It's, it's, it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. Like, what do we got to talk about every single day? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it, we're still cool. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's people now that I don't have to talk to them. Like, I don't talk to you every day. Mm -hmm. You know, when I see you, it's good. You know, if you were in Charlotte, right. I hit you up, and that's what it is. Yep. And it's never any hard feelings about it. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? But I think you also have to learn the dynamics of what type of friend you are and what type of friends you have. Every friend isn't for everything. Mm -hmm. You know? So, 
I never, it, as far as friendship, I never felt slighted. Now, as far as me dating someone, I was kind of dating, not kind of, I was dating someone mm -hmm. when I moved and that, um, eh, I went home a, a good, not a lot, but every few months I was going home. Or, yeah. And he did come out um, a couple, he came when I went, he came twice. Yeah. He came out there twice. And so, um, and even with that, I never felt like slighted. I liked it actually. The space. I did not mind it. Okay. Because uh -huh. like, I didn't like. You're not my husband, you know. Yeah. Like, go on, go on. Right, yeah. like yeah. it was cool that we both. I think it was like it's that that interaction was a very different one. It That's was fair. not a typical one. So somebody else might be like, oh my god, I'm sick. But it was like, eh, I'm straight. Like yeah, I miss you. And sometimes it was harder than others, but. For the most part, it was not bad, like, because mm. you just learn, like, you know, it's like, <clears throat> you realize, like, okay, duh, you cannot be around this person, so you're going to complain about it, or you're just going to deal with it, so, we did talk, like, now, I did talk to him more than I talked to my friends, obviously, Makes sense. and so, but it still wasn't like I was on the phone with him every night, and right. I was him all the time, no, it wasn't like that either, but none of, none of those relationships ever suffered or slacked. That's a blessing. Because of the distance. Mm -hmm. If anything, like, I like being far away because <clears throat> not so being far away from your friends, your significant other, whoever, it makes the time you're together a lot better. Yeah. You know, because yeah. like, you know, you don't, you don't have that much time. Right. So, so you, you cherish them more. That's fair. You know what I'm saying? You appreciate their presence more. Yeah. Than you would if you saw them every day all the time. So, yeah. That's it worked cool. out. That's cool. And so, and so you started your job out there and, and was that smooth sailing? Okay. <laughs> it, it, it's funny because <clears throat> I knew when I got that job I didn't want it. Hmm. <clears throat> but me having this idea that that's what I'm supposed to do, mm -hmm. I took it anyway. I see. You I tried to convince it. yourself it was for you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I said, well, what I got to lose? And even um, Amaya had just quit her job and, was, and started going back to school. Mm hmm. Um, or was in the transition of making, of doing that. And she even said to me, she was like, you know, are you sure this is what you want? You know, I know what it's like to hate a job. Um, yeah. You know, are you, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, I, I think I can do it. You know, I'm supposed to be traveling it's, mm -hmm. uh, so much amount of time. And I, you know, I won't have time to not like it. Right. And, but I knew even then, I did not really want that job. I didn't really, wasn't really interested. Okay. Um, but I took it, mm -hmm. you know? And so I get there, I get to Kansas City, I get to the job or whatever, and um, the company was, it was a really good company that I worked I see. for. I was a healthcare IT consultant, so oh, that's fine. Um, my job created the program the hospital uses. So when you get ah, checked in, see, yeah. they create hospital software. That's cool. Yeah, so. So the money is. I was not paid badly. <laughs> uh, for me to come be fresh out of school at that job, I, I, the uh -huh. salary was not bad. That's what's up. Um, <clears throat> and so, it's a cool idea. And then like I, the benefits are really good. Like they had doctors there. Ah, uh, you yeah. know. So like if you have to go to the doctor, you're just walking across the street because they right. have like they have a lot more nurse practitioners than they did doctors. That makes sense. Um, yeah. there was a pharmacy on campus. Mm. Um, a oh, pool, wow. A fitness center. So you were good. Yeah, cafeteria. Like uh -huh. it was not bad at all. Like those things was not bad. The actual work that I was doing, no. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't care about it. I uh -huh. didn't care. So I didn't care about it. So I didn't really care to learn how to be good at it. I see. You know, I did what I had to do so that nobody was complaining about me. You just showed up. I just showed up. Okay. I just showed up. <laughs> so no. And so then with that, when you, when you started to obviously realize that you were in a space that you didn't want to be in, what what was the trigger and what was kind of in that phase of realizing that, you know, maybe I'm not supposed to be out here. What did you have to like admit to yourself? Um, moment? Like I said, from the beginning, I knew I didn't want to be there. Yeah. And the first, it was for, at first it was smooth sailing. And then um, there would be days when I just did not want to go. Yeah. Um, that I would make up dumb things <laughs> to not have to go, or there would be days when I would call my mom after work crying and be like, I'm going to have to quit. Yeah. And I was like, I'm about to go work at Target and get another job, and I'm going <laughs> to pay my rent until I can't pay it, until my lease is up. Like, uh -huh. things that's, like that. That's where you are. 
that's where I was. Like, I, I would be at work crying. Like, I would have to go to my car and get myself together because I did not want to be there. And I hated it so much. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Those are the times when... I'm trying to remember if there was... I'm sure I said this in one of my videos, but I don't remember. Because I try not to... I try not to really think about that because I'm not... I don't think I'm still, like... The feelings that I that came with being there, I don't know if I'm all the way good with this deal. Yeah. It still kind of hurts me a little bit. Yeah. But um, I'm trying to think if there's something that just happened. I don't know if it was one thing, but I do know, like, me being upset. Like, there were, that kept happening. And, and it was yeah, getting and it was exhausting. Affecting me. Yeah, and me, like, not doing, like, I would go home and just sit. Like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't do mm -hmm. much. I mean, there wasn't much to do in Kansas City anyway, but. That didn't help um, the fact that you weren't enjoying what you were doing. Exactly, so. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. And and so then you eventually decided earlier this year, I think, to move back. Mm -hmm. And and what then happened from that point? From you got you got back mm -hmm. from from Kansas City. You moved back to North Carolina, mm -hmm. and then what? So I something. In, so when I before I decided to move back to North Carolina, I tried to make it work in Kansas City. Okay. I tried to. Um, Look for other jobs. Yeah. In Kansas City, you know, to. Cause, what was gonna happen? My lease was. That's the thing that really triggered it. My lease was about to be up. I said. And I didn't um, have anything else. I didn't. I needed to figure out. I didn't want to commit to another year. I said. And I, I was like, maybe I can do six months. Uh huh. And then, and so I was like, okay, I can do a six month lease and then try to find a new job. But I was like, I can't stay. I was like, I cannot stay at this job. I see. I, I, that's what I can't do. Okay. So for, before I decided to just leave Kansas City altogether, I knew I was going to quit. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, let me. I, and I did go on some interviews, but it didn't it didn't work out. So I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? Like, it's a reason why this is not working. Right. That's why I said, it's time for me to come home. And so um, my lease, when was my lease up? Because hmm. after my year, I did a six months. So that's what you're around like? June-ish, July-ish, maybe? No, it was before that, because I left in April. Ah, uh, But, okay. so, so, I decided to, I think I told my manager I was quitting in April. I mean, okay. in March. In March, I told her I was leaving. I told her a month in advance. And so, um, so I decided, I, and I knew, and before, and so once I, I think I decided in January or February that I was going to move back home. And so, um, in that time, I was applying to jobs in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And so, the time was winding down, the time was winding down, and I still, nothing was really sticking, which I didn't, I was hopeful that mm -hmm. I would find something before I, I